sometimes I would want to use bad words, but I would, I would, restrain, I would restrain myself and to say, do you think I'm an idiot? I am pro myself, I'm not pro anybody. Instead of wasting, I really feel sorry for some of these people. They come to lecture, you lecture me, you don't know what you are talking about. Let us listen to President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda, bold and unapologetic about the truths surrounding the current predicament of the African continent at the Non-Aligned Movement Summit 2024 at Spec Resort Munyonyo. In order for more people to see this message from the great African leader, please like, share, and comment on this video. As we close, we should remind ourselves of our motto for this uh, conference, which was deepening cooperation for global affluence. This will be the first time, if we, it is achieved in the coming years, that the whole world is affluent. Until by, by 1980, the only affluent part of the world was Western Europe, North America, and Japan. The rest of the world were in poverty. In the last 50 years, we have 40 years, 40 something years, we have seen spread of affluence to some other countries, China, some countries in other parts of the world, spreading affluence a bit more. And the, what we are aiming at is affluence for the whole world. We may not achieve it in a short time, but we should have it on the radar screen as, as, our, as our aim. In order to do that, we go back to our principles of NAM. And those principles, the Bandung principles, really start with the humility, to be humble, not to think that what you think is the only way of doing things. In other language, we call that not the way they should be in your head. We who have spent, all, I have spent about 60 years, more than 60 years, engaged in the uh, political resistance in Africa here. And in those years, we have been studying uh, all these uh, events in the whole world, actually. And we have got some good idea. If you look at the 500 years from the time of the Renaissance in Europe, even if you don't go back to the earlier periods, you'll find that ideas were coming, new ideas, then they, people discover better ways of thinking. We started off with bullionism. There was a thinking in Europe that bullionism is the, is the correct way of building wealth. That is gold, <coughs> getting gold and silver. And some of the countries did that a lot, but they ended up being not developed. I don't want to mention individual countries. Thereafter, after some time, it became clear that 
bullionism was not the source of wealth. Then there were some thinkers in France who talked of physio they were called physiocrats. Physiocrats believed that wealth was only in agriculture, that if you emphasize agriculture, uh, you, you will be prosperous. But after some time, a man called Adam Smith came along and wrote his book in the year 1776 entitled The Source of the Wealth of Nations. Where does the wealth of nations come from? And he was able to show that by private effort, free enterprise, by specialization and exchange, you, you, you can create wealth for, for the country. He was more correct than the others, Adam Smith. The, then Karl Marx came and said, no, uh, private property is the source of all evil. We should get rid of private property and uh, collectivize wealth. He had some good points in central planning, but obviously there were also some philosophical mistakes in his position. Now, Adam Smith helped uh, certain uh, Europe to move forward, but something else came up which he had not foreseen. This was the issue of the market. If you produce, who buys? If you produce and, and nobody buys, or very few people buy, you will not continue. That's how you, you, you got to the crisis in Europe of 1929, the collapse of the capitalist system, the depression. That's how now another thinker, Maynard Keynes, came along and said, uh-uh, you people, you forget the issue of aggregated demand that if, 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 even if you give money, free money to people in their pockets, they buy what is produced, it will help the economy. That's how the idea of the welfare state came, where to give money to people even, even when they are doing nothing. Now, you can see just in that period, so many ideas coming, going, coming, going. This is the correct way. Instead of Wasting. I really feel sorry for some of these people. They come to lecture. You lecture me, you don't know what you are talking about. So therefore, the noun, I'm glad we are all here. I want to assure you that we seem to be on the right way, unlike the other people who are full of themselves and think that the only way is the way they think. When we were busy in our political struggles, they would come and ask me, are you pro-East or pro-West? I am pro myself, I'm not pro anybody. Why would you not have it in your head that this man or this group of people are pro their own interest? Why would you think that my job is to be pro this one or, or the other one and I have no other, other job except that? That's really uh, incredible shallowness. Therefore, it's good that this movement has been going on. We have the capacity to solve many of these problems. If we cooperate among themselves, because remember we, we have been saying that wealth comes from producing goods and services and selling them. Now that means three things. Number one, investment to 
produce the goods or the services, a factory, a hotel, a transport business, that is either, either, either good or service produced. And we can cooperate here. Those people with some surplus capital can invest in our countries and we produce goods and services, which means that the NAM governments must create conducive, conducive atmosphere for investments to take place. The NAM countries also sometimes make mistakes, like here in Uganda. Uganda was moving very well in the 1960s. Then we had a man called Idi Amin. I don't know whether you heard of him. He, he, he was a soldier, a, a British soldier, poor, no education. He, he came and took over the, the government. We decided to fight him. But in a very short time, he expelled our Asians. There were Asian people who had come from Asia and, and, and settled here, especially India, Pakistan. This property here, this is a joint venture between the government and one of those people, one of our Indian uh, origin people. Idi Amin expelled all this. And yet they were a very active investment group. They were in sugar, they were in hotels, they were in uh, steel production. So here you had a leader of a NAM country undermining his own economy. So therefore, it is very crucial that we study very carefully the issue of the investment climate in our respective countries. When we, we kicked out all these people and we came into government, we brought back, we gave, we gave back the properties of, of the, our Asian uh, citizens and non-citizens that Idi Amin had taken. We gave them back. We had a hot debate in Parliament. Some people saying this, some other, I said, we said no, they must get back their properties. And they got their properties. And this one here is one of those people who came back as soon as he heard that we were given, he came back from, he was in London, he came back here. And the other day I was, I was asking our people, how many factories have been built by our Indian returnees. They told me 900, 900 factories they, they had built since they came back. So this is one front line of struggle. The atmosphere for investors to produce goods and services using the raw materials we have in our respective countries. Now, once you produce a good or a service, then the next challenge is who buys what you produce. Somebody must buy it, and buy it in big quantities so that you continue expanding. That's why there is the internal market, like Uganda here, we are a population of 46 million people, so they buy. But the internal market of Uganda is not enough. That's why we need the regional market, integration in East Africa, in Africa, so that we deal with the, uh, deal with the issue of the market uh, regionally and nationally. But internationally, since we are members of the same group of countries with similar interests, we should promote trade among ourselves. 
because, because when I buy from you, I'm supporting your prosperity. And when you buy from me, you are supporting my prosperity. And, and we, uh, we shall, uh, I don't know how the Secretariat is organized of NAM and uh, on the G77 to, produce, to bring ideas of how we can promote and expand uh, inter, interstate trade among the NAM countries. We, the Africans, have been supporting, we, the Ugandans here, have been supporting the prosperity of others from our pockets by buying what they produce. You, you hear that I have been around for a long time. By, by 1962, when Uganda got independence, I was, I was 18 years old, and I was already active as a youth and I was following everything. At that time, <coughs> we were buying British products because we were a British colony. We would buy British cars, Bedfords, Morris Minor, Austin, I, don't, I remember those vehicles. Range Rover, well, only British vehicles, British-made vehicles. When we got independence, our, our leaders started importing vehicles from France, the Peugeot, from Germany, the Mercedes-Benz, but especially from Japan. And we bought, we have been buying a lot of vehicles from Japan. But Japan are not uh, wise traders. I told them, say, you Japanese, we are enriching you with our pockets. We are buying your vehicles. All clans, all clans of Japanese vehicles are here. Pajero, I don't know which clan, the other clan, Mitsubishi. Why don't you come and assemble at least these vehicles in Uganda? Uh-uh, they, they were not interested. Ah, okay. I see you want to, to, to take blood from me. You don't want to give some blood to me. Now, we are making our own vehicles. I don't know whether these people can show those vehicles on this screen here. Have you got those pictures or you have failed? Ah. All those vehicles are electric, electric vehicles being made by our people. And that's one of the factories where they are made. Now, my Japanese people came and said, no, we want to assemble vehicles here. Say, too late. Sorry. I can no longer, I'm no longer interested in uh, assembling I now only want manufacturing here. If you don't want that, bye-bye. Uh, those are now... Uh... So, therefore, the NAM countries should not be part of this uh, blindness, thinking that I, can only buy from, I should only buy from you, buy from you, you buy nothing from me. You should be the one to... to, to I was telling the, the Japanese, since we are buying your vehicles, you should be coming here to, to even invest, for instance, in, in value addition for agriculture. Okay, I buy your vehicles, but you also uh, help me in manufacturing, manufacturing cereals, manufacturing process, adding value to coffee, and so on. No, they, they are not bothered. Not bothered. This is not a, a good way. So, number one, production of a good or a service. Number two, by buying marketing from one another. But number three, you cannot link the producer of the good and the service to the consumer without infrastructure. You need infrastructure. You need roads, you need the railway, you need the ports, you need the airlines, 
to link the producer and the consumer. So all these are uh, opportunities, areas of, of opportunities for all our NAM countries and the group of 77, who account for 80 percent of the population of the world. His Excellency Antonio Guterres has talked about financing. We, shall have, we, we, we are going to intensify our discussions with the, with the BRICS, with the, all these other groups, about the affordable financing. Affordable financing. Where can we get this, uh, this money from? If the Britain Woods uh, institutions, uh, we, 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 because we are, we are Christians, and Christians believe in, in, in repentance and forgiveness, if the Britain Woods institutions can confess their sins and repent, we can forgive them. And they have a chance. They have a chance. I give them some option that please, time to repent. We repent before it is too late. Otherwise, we are, we are going to continue uh, uh, exploring for new ways of financing. And we can do it. We can do it. Uh, a country like Uganda lacks very little. The only thing we lack, apart from our people not knowing what to do, because they, are not, they have not been woken up, uh, the only thing we have not, we have not been having has been uh, energy, uh, fuel, but fortunately we found our own petroleum here, so soon we shall be pumping out our petroleum and refining it. And that means we have got very, every, almost everything here. Uh, an educated population, the people who are making those vehicles are highly educated Ugandans. Uh, so what we really need from our African brothers, which we have been discussing with them, has been the issue of the market, the market, the market, the market. But financing, there are also ways of financing. You can get a group like the National Security Fund of Uganda. It has got a lot of money. But the invest I don't know where. So, so there are ways we can, all these countries have national security, social, social security funds because I have seen them in a number of countries. How are these, how are these, how is this money used? But we are going to go for options of affordable financing. Now the, the issue of helplessness, I don't really think we should, we, we should be, we are, we, we are helpless. It is just because we don't get together. My testimony to the NAM conference here is what I have seen. By 1963, by 1950, almost all the African countries were under colonial control. Through the agitation and uh, some fighting in Algeria, in Kenya, in, uh, also in Vietnam, outside Africa, some of the clever imperialists started giving independence. And by 1963, when the Afri Organization of African Unity was founded, only 36 countries had got independence. 20 were still not independent. Many of them are here. And our leaders went to Addis Ababa to say, please, give all the African countries independence. If you don't give them, we shall kick you out by force. And uh, the colonial people thought to Africans were joking, what can they do? What can the Africans do? And the Africans organized themselves. Many of them are here. The, the liberation movements, supported by the frontline states, Tanzania, Zambia, 
Initially, Tanzania was alone, then Zambia, then Botswana. Now, to cut a long story short, Frerimo started fighting in 1964, Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Zimbabwe, Namibia, South Africa itself, the African National Congress. Now, the war in Mozambique started in 1964. By 1974, the Portuguese Empire collapsed. By 1980, Zimbabwe got independence. By 1990, Namibia got independence. By 1994, South Africa was, was, was liberated. So, wh where was the helpless 